technical difficulty that we experienced this morning, but we are on and we are live. It is Brent Harding hailing out of Boston, Massachusetts, and I bring you the Wealth Warrior broadcast this morning. My goodness, have we got a lot to talk about today. I feel like a news reporter this morning. I want to share with you, we're talking about trust, trust, who has a trust. And I want to share with you that today's show is actually being dedicated to the families in Manchester, UK. So I want to uh, make sure that we remember them, that we remember not only the, the lives that were lost, but those that survived and the families that will carry on after them. And I am especially moved by something that the Boston Globe staff did. And that was the Boston Globe staff sent something small but yet significant. You saw the picture that I had, that I posted on our site on the Wealth Warriors Facebook page. And I said, it was something that was small, yet it was measurable, meaningful. Why? They sent the Manchester Evening News staff pizza. They sent them pizza in, in a show of solidarity. They uh, shared that it was to keep them going. And I thought that was so powerful that but with all that was happening, something that would keep us going, something that would say in all of this, tra all of this uh, tragedy, there is hope. So today's show is definitely being dedicated to the families of Manchester UK bombing. And with that, we're talking about trust. And I thought it was so fitting to be discussing this article, be, to be discussing this topic, especially given the dedication that we're doing today, because who knows when, who knows what's going to happen to us in the future? And that means that our houses need to be in order, part of the wealth and part of passing on the legacy is that we have to be clear about our timelines. You know, we can't sit there and think that every, that we've got time and time and time and time. We need to understand that time is precious and our houses need to be in order, especially if we're going to pass them on to the next generation so that that hope, that torch gets passed on. And so that's why I say to you, it is important. This, this show today could not be more timely. With that being said, I want to share with you, what can you expect from today's show? We're going to be talking about various types of trust. In the research I was doing, uh, while I thought I knew something, holy smokes, I could tell you right now, I didn't know nearly what I thought that I knew. So with that being said, we've got plenty to cover today. I want to start off by giving a shout out to none other than Robin Tennille, who is a platinum ambassador for the E3 Power Up, which is occurring on September 30th. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, then you need to go up to Eventbrite and purchase your tickets because guess what? VIP tickets are going fast. And the news is, when it is done, it's one and done. So I want to say again, good morning to Robin Tennille. I want to share a good morning to Pamela Stone. Pamela Stone is our ambassador. She's our media ambassador for E3 Power Up. She is also co-host on the third Saturday of every month where we talk about the updates. And boy, do we have a plethora of updates for you coming in June. So I want to give a shout out to her. I also want to give a good morning to Dr. Wright, who hails from California. So imagine what time she's up to share uh, her pearls of wisdom wisdom and to participate in the broadcast. Thumbs up. I want to give a shout out to another VIP who purchased her ticket for E3 Power Up. That's Nancy Lewis Hill. I want to say shout out. And also, I'm going to be on one of her broadcasts. So I want to say thank you, Nancy, for inviting me on. I want to give a shout out to Sandra Talls. Uh, Sandra Talls is a clinician on a mission. And I hope I'm saying it right. It might be Tallis, Sandra Talls. I want to say hello and welcome to her. Also, a new member 
of the Wealth Warrior community, Lawanda Menafide. I want to say, let me try that again, Menafi. That's right, Lawanda Menafi. Welcome to the family. Also, I want to give a shout out and welcome back to Boston to Ronald Cumming. Ronald Cumming uh, uh, did a broadcast with me. In other words, rephrase that. Let me say I was on his radio show back in April. We talked about E3 Power Up. I want to welcome him back. He was out of town. And I want to say I'm going to be enthusiastic. We're going to do a cross, uh, bro uh, cross uh, broadcast where I'll be on one of his broadcasts and he'll be on one of mine. Let me roll back one moment and say for Lawanda Menafi, she is a fashionista. By all means, welcome her to the family she's going to share a little bit about herself in our feed so again welcome i want to also welcome um taina t-a-i-n-a -A, taina lawn she too is a uh, a new member of the family and she has a quote on her page that i absolutely love by bruce uh by bruce lee so i'm not going to tell you what it is i'm gonna let you go up and take a look at it but it is lovely with that being said who has bragging rights to the early riser who has the bragging rights who is carrying the trophy this week well i've got news for you joyce swinson has bragging rights. That's right. Joy Swinson is a, a New York life insurance representative. She was up at five o'clock this morning and said, not only was she up, she read a book and she exercised. I got to give it to her. You got bragging rights. So, Joy Swinson, I hope I've done you well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, rather than have a sponsor for Trust Trust, who has the trust, I want to share with you that the show is being dedicated to the families of our Manchester, across the, across the ocean, our Manchester families. So this show is being dedicated to them, and I want you to remember them in your thoughts. If you have family that is in the UK, by all means, reach out to the family and let them know that they are loved and thought of and in our prayers. With that being said, we're going to get underway with the broadcast this morning. If you do not have pen and paper, get pen and paper. Some people say, well, hey, you know, I'm just going to type things up. Here's something very powerful about writing in pen and paper, and that is this. Our neurotransmitters, when we take our pens and we put that on the paper, something happens in our brains. Our neurotransmitters wake up up and there is the brain body connection that is phenomenally powerful and so what i want to get across to you is by all means you want to do that that's why pen and paper has not gone out of fashion that's why journals have not gone out of fashion why because pen and paper and the neurotransmitters are critical how's that for an explanation <laughs> Okay, let's get into it. We're going to do some breaking down of information today. So I, in the, in the research, what I found out was there are a plethora of trust. It is amazing. There are trusts for special needs. There are irrevocable trusts. There are living trusts. There are a plethora. So what I did was I pulled out the trust that I thought would be most powerful and most conversational and things that you would want to have at the top of mind and you'd want to be utilizing with all due speed. At the top of the list is a nominee trust. It's often referred to as a realty trust. Now here's something that's very important about trust. State by state, Contention upon your state will dictate more of the language. So, for example, in Massachusetts, nominee trust is the preferred title. However, in another area, you might find that realty trusts are synonymous with nominee trust in the state in which you live. So it's going to be important for you to know what you want the trust to do when you're sitting down with legal counsel. What will the trust 
be doing for you, which will typically dictate the name and the type. So what I'm going to do is give you language that is in Massachusetts, language that typically should be synonymous where at whatever state you live in, but just in case you want to make sure that you understand the definition of the trust as well. Now, with that being said, before we get underway, I want to share with you that we're going to do something because we want to help everyone we know get this language. Am I right? Well, then in that case, what I want you to do is I want you to pick up your cell phone. Pick up your cell phone, and I would like for you to cause us to have literally hundreds of people watching today's broadcast. So how can you do that? You can pick up your phone and you can share where you're at. You can hit the share button and say, join in on this broadcast. All you have to do is pick it up, put it in your hand, and just hit the share button and share the link and invite them in because this is complimentary information. It is information you want to know about before you sit down and pay $400 an hour for an attorney to take care of what you need. So this is complimentary. It's not free. It has value. So I want you to take that with you as we talk this morning. La the nominee trust, here's what I want you to understand. First of all, what is trust about? What is tr What are trustees about? Well, when you are establishing a trust and you have trustees, a trustee is given the responsibility for managing someone else's property or money. So what you're saying is that at your demise, somebody is going to handle the property is going to handle whatever is in the trust based on your instruction to the beneficiaries, those that are receiving whatever is in the trust. Did you get that? So just by virtue of the word trust, it would kind of indicate that that person is trustworthy because you are giving them responsibility to handle your business at your demise, unless it's a living trust. All right. Now, before we get underway, I got to give some shout outs. Carl Wingard, welcome. It is so great to see you because I can see your name and I know you're there. Rosalind Charles. It is terrific to see you. Good morning. I want to say good morning and I'll thank you, Robin Tanil. Robin says, share, share, share the broadcast. Thank you for that, Robin. I do appreciate it tremendously. So we are sharing some heavy weighted information. You know, sometimes people wonder, well, how are the wealthy continuing to be wealthy? What is it that they're doing that we're not doing? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things they're doing is they are protecting their assets. Give me just a moment while I grab a cup. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. They're protecting their assets. And among the ways that they protect them are through trust. So with that being said, just I'm having a real burp here, just a moment. <clears throat> excuse me. More often than not, people think that just because you have everything in a trust, that that means that you're not able to get sued. I've got news for you. The United States government can get sued. So we can get sued. However, it's about protection. It's about the layers that you put in front of somebody so that either one or two things happens. Either you deter them, you wear them out because they're having to spend money to sue you, or you're insulating. I call it a belt and suspenders. So right now, this month, we're talking about trust. Next month in June, we're gonna be talking about insurance. It is a belt, I'm excuse me, it's suspenders, and then it's the belt. We are covering ourselves, we're insulating ourselves. One of the best ways to initiate that insulation is through trust. And there are a number of trusts that's contingent upon what you need. Here are some do's and don'ts that are, uh, are, are general statements relative. It doesn't matter what trust you have, they are general statements. And that is this, do have more than one trustee. 
Having two trustees avoids, at least two trustees avoids gaps. It, it, it acts as a certifying of the actions that are being taken. So you would typically want to have two trusts. They would have roles that are clearly defined so that there should be no conflict between the trust and disseminating what it is that you want to disseminate. Again, it is important that you do that. It's important that you understand it. And it's important that it's trustworthy individuals. There are no questions about who that person is, about what their background is, about what issues. Are their issues compartmentalized because you're entrusting them and you do not want your stuff tangled up in theirs? So again, a major do, regardless of the trust, is that you have more than one. So there's no gap. And that trust, that trustee certifies that an action has been taken. Now, here's a don't, a general don't. Don't, 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 never, ever, never, ever be the sole trustee and beneficiary. There is a legal reason for that. And some of us go, no, 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 no. I want to make sure I can control everything I have at all. And, 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 you know, and I'm setting this up because I'm going to be the beneficiary. So I'm going to, I'm going to avoid taxes and I'm going to avert this and I'm going to avert that. And I'm going to avert the other. Get ready. You ready for the legal? There are times when what you can do is you create a merger of the legal and equitable title and it collapses the trust. It creates a merger of the legal and equitable title and causes the trust to collapse. Now, with this being said, with this being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make declaration right now as I speak. I am not an attorney. I am not a CPA, I'm not a tax advisor, I'm not a tax consultant. I am an entrepreneur. I'm a business owner with many years of experience of doing things well and having challenges. And so what you are getting is the benefit of my knowledge. You're getting the benefit of the years that I have been in business. I am going to always, always, always categorically say you must seek out the appropriate counsel. What I am doing is providing you with information so when you walk in the door, you already have your questions ready. Because remember, that's your money being spent. And so you want to get the best bang for your buck. Yes? Somebody put yes in the feed. Yes, I want the best bang for my buck. Please put that in there because that is important that you understand that. And in order for you to get the best bang for your buck, you've got to have information. And that's what you're getting today. Here is another never. Never, ever, ever, never, ever, 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 never name the beneficiaries on trust docs. That's the point. The point is you're putting the assets in. The point is the beneficiaries are protected. The point is you're passing it on at the appropriate time and they are not exposed. That is the point, ladies and gentlemen. And have I seen that? Yes, I have. Have I went, oh my goodness. How much did you pay to have this done? Why did you decide that you needed to list them? inappropriate, critical, critical, critical. So I want to share that with you. Um, a trustee is listed at, listed on um, legal title uh, to their benefits. So let me try that again. Trustee is listed on legal title and they're listed on legal title for the benefit of you as it relates to dispersing or controlling or managing the property or the money. Now, they, you have to be very careful. And again, I'm gonna say you want to talk to counsel about this as to the roles of the trustee. But remember, they have the, they're given the responsibility for managing someone else's property 
or money. They don't own it. They're managing it on your behalf. And so what you want them to do is going to be important. What you want them to do is actually going to be of critical mass. Okay, let me ask you something. Have you gotten some nuggets so far? Have you gotten some nuggets so far? If you have, pick the phone up, hit the share button, because we got more to come. That's right. We have more to come. We're going to take a little station break. And what I'd like to share with you is that we have a phenomenal event coming up on September 30th in the city of Boston, state of Massachusetts. It is E3 Power Up. It is a woman's conference. It's an award-winning woman's conference that's coming to Boston. Tickets are on sale right now. We only have 30 tickets available. Actually, we have less than 30 tickets available because VIPs have already purchased. You want to be there up front in person. And I'm going to tell you something. For the, the One of the benefits or a couple of the benefits about being a VIP is you get to participate in the evening session. You get to participate with both myself and Dr. Wright, who's flying in from California, America's crowdfunding expert, is going to be in Boston. She's going to be talking about crowdfunding on Facebook. She's going to be talking about women investing. Powerful stuff. She's going to be joined here with Pamela Stone and Robin Tenniel and others, which you will learn about next month. And so those VIP tickets are hot, hot, hot. We're going to be talking about investing that you can do right here in Boston with companies that have projects that you can invest in. That's how hot this is going to be. It is to educate with business for business clarity. So it doesn't matter whether you've been in business two years or 10 years, there is plenty of meat on the bone for you. We're going to empower ourselves with success stories, with local success stories. There are local sheroes right here. There are local heroes right here. And I'll tell you why I'm, going to, why I'm saying that in just a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to validate entrepreneurship as one of the best vehicles, one of the best vehicles for securing financial independence. And I know Ms. Robin Ch Ms. Rob uh, Roslyn Charles can speak to that. She has been an entrepreneur for a very long time. She has sustaining power. As far as I'm concerned, she is a local Shiro. Now, I said hero. That is because we are inviting men on this to this event. Fellas, why are we asking you, inviting you to be with us? Because there is something to be gained. What is it, Brent, you say? Well, a couple of things. First of all, we want to understand how to market to you. Secondly, to you, gentlemen, you are supporting that woman in your life. You are supporting that partner in your life. You need to understand how we operate in business, how we think in business, what drives us in business. You need that in order to continue to, to fuel the finances, to fuel the relationships. And so we are saying, fellas, go up on, on uh, Eventbrite and get your tickets too. So, and we're limiting it to 100 individuals. Why? Because this is not just a one-time, one activity. This is not only the activity itself. However, it is times when we'll be dispersing and discussing it throughout the year. So we'll be sharing stories. We'll be posting the live feed throughout the year until the next one. So you're going to get plenty of bang for your buck. How about that? So with that being said, I just want to encourage you. You can find tickets in one of two places right now, either on Eventbrite under E3 Power Up, or you literally can go to the Wealth Warrior broadcast page, Wealth Warriors, Wealth Warrior Group broadcast page, and you will see in the feed, you'll see Dr. Wright and myself, you see the, the tab that allows you to go directly into 
Eventbrite and get your tickets. How about that? So we want to see you there. It's going to be truly, truly, truly exciting. With that being said, let's move forward. We've got more to share. Now, before we get into various lists of, uh, of various types of, um, of trust, we talked about one last week that I want to, no, excuse me, week before, that I want to talk about, and that is living trust. We actually ended the broadcast with a discussion on living trust, and I want to revisit that from the perspective of helping you to understand the benefits of having a living trust right now. A living trust occurs in our lifetimes. That means we are alive and well. And so we are able to define what it is, who is who are the beneficiaries are. We're able to pass our legacy on to the next generation. And I say that in the light of what happened in Manchester. Because there were people there that had no idea that that day would be the end. And so they may not have had an opportunity to have a living trust, to pass on their legacy, to carry on their name. You and I have that opportunity. We cannot, cannot, cannot afford to let it not go forward, to let it go into oblivion because of somebody else's actions. We have responsibility, yes? So here, and I know I sound intense today because I want to move you to action. This happens too many times. In fact, I had the privilege uh, this uh, past week of getting together at an event and I was talking to an attorney who shared with me that it is 70 years later and his family is still dealing with issues related to passing on to next generation. 70, that is seven, zero. He said what happened was the person who was the trustee died prematurely at age 47. And he said th the interesting part was it was, there were four of them. The other three weren't even interested. They didn't know what was supposed to be going on, what was supposed to be happening. They were listed as trustees. They didn't know what their roles were. It is 70 years. He says he is just, this year, just finishing up dealing with the details of what his father and grandfather attempted to put into play. Okay? Have I beat it down now? Good. Okay. So I want to share with you the living trust and the advantages of that living trust. Um, there is, when you have that trust, there's the avoidance of duplicate probate. So you're not having the state step in and having to probate your estate. And the taxes that are, that are associated with probate are astronomical. So again, the avoidance of duplicate probate in another state relative to property owned at the time of death. That is important. You are doing all of this. You're able to picture everything in your lifetime. Also, the avoidance of undesired guardians or conservators being appointed by the court to manage your property upon incapacity or incompetence. So Something happens, you have a, an, an illness that incapacitates you. Then suddenly what happens? You have nothing in place, <clears throat> excuse me, and now you've got a guardian or a conservator that's appointed by the court who doesn't know you and your family and what you want to have happen. That is that's a tough assignment. Also, after the donor's death, trustees distribute the trust assets directly to the beneficiaries without probate. Delicious. A trust may be more difficult to contest than a will. It's not that it can't be contested, but it's more challenging to contest it. We also know that after the donor's death, the costs and expenses for personal representatives, lawyers, accountants, and others may actually be less because it's already taken care of while you are alive. 
In some states, a living trust can be kept more confidential than a will. These are benefits. And then while the donor is alive and competent, alive and competent, he or she is in complete control of the trust. You have the right to, call, to request a resignation from a trustee. The donor may change, terminate the trust if they so choose. So you have a lot of power while you're alive and while you are in fact competent. That, ladies and gentlemen, is truly a benefit. Now, I'm going to tell you that I came, I listed nine, that I, that I listed eight more, eight more trusts that you would be interested in hearing about. Eight more trusts. Now, before we do that, you know, today I am banking on us having at least a hundred people watching this broadcast live. A hundred people live on Facebook. Cindy Taylor, welcome. It's good to see you. Ah, I am delighted about that. So with that being said, I want to ask everybody, do it again. Share, share, share. Pick the phone up and hit the share button and get the message out. We want to share detailed information. We do not want to have the heartache of knowing that we could have done something about this and it would be passed on. Our legacy and our name would continue on in our lifetime. Time goes by quickly. Okay, enough of the song. Let's hear how we can do something and make things happen. Well, I will do that directly after announcements. <laughs> Okay, we've got announcements, announcements, announcements. Every Saturday morning, Brent Harding, Robin Tenniel are here, and also Pamela Stone is here. I tell you what, she is on, uh, she's our co host for the third Saturday of the month, but she's here with me every Saturday. She is always on our live feed. Robin Tenniel is on our live feed. So every Saturday morning, we are here. Preferably at 9 a.m. Occasionally we slip, so I'm 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 gonna own it. We're here at 9 a.m. And what is our charge? Our charge is to provide you with solid information that you get to use for your family to help you create wealth. So every every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the month of June, we will be talking about insurance, about the belt and suspenders. I refer to that as the belt and suspenders. That is passing the risk. That is distributing the risk so you don't have to own all liability. So that is happening. June 2nd. I and a number of us will be at the Boston Speak Series event with Kit Pang. And that will be at, at the Fenway, at the Landsmark Building at the Fenway. Come on down and join us. We are creating an event within an event. It's going to be exciting. And you want to be there with us. It is an awesome time if you are an entrepreneur and you want to connect and network with people. You want to be with us for that day because we are going to be phenomenal. Third, third Saturday of the month, we're going to be talking about E3 Power Up. We've got news to share. You got to be there in order to get the news. I want to thank Nancy Lewis again for joining the broadcast. Also, I want and for inviting me onto her onto her broadcast, her Facebook Live. I'll share details with you as soon as we set a date. And to Ronald Cumming, I want to say the same. We will share details when it's happening just before we'll let you know for a certainty. Tickets, tickets, tickets. You want to get your VIP ticket, go up to Eventbrite today and get your ticket to a phenomenal event. Mark your calendar, September 30th. It's happening. It's going down in Boston. I am enjoying today. I am having a lot of fun with everyone. So let me share with you. Did you invite people on? Did you get? Did you hit the share button? Yes. Terrific. Let me share with you 
details, details, details about trust that you want to think about because maybe this trust applies to you. I got to give a shout out to my girl, Coco Bray. Good morning. It's good to have you on the live feed. Hit me up with some love. I need some thumbs up. When you're hearing something good, I need a thumb up. I need some love. I need to be loved. It's nine o'clock in the morning. All right, let me go on. Let's talk about various types of assets, uh, various types of trust. There is a trust that's known as an asset protection trust. That is the title of the trust, asset protection. You already get an indication of what that means right there, asset protection. It, what it does is it protects your assets from future claims. Interesting, isn't it? When we say for future claims, what that means is claims in the future. For example, what I shared with you from the attorney, 70 years later, somebody could make a claim against that asset. So it's an asset protection trust. How about a charitable trust? A charitable trust is set up for the benefit of the charity. There are some interesting things about a charitable trust. If you've ever wondered why so many people will get an will, will set up an, a charitable trust, mm -mm -mm. let me share a little detail. Let me share a little secret with you. Tax deductions. It's charitable. Tax deductions. That is powerful. You want to look that up. You want to Google it and then do the research. Remember, Google is not a research engine. It is a search engine. Charitable trust. There is something called a constructive trust. And that's when a person takes a legal title to a property because there have been fraud, it has been fraud. Uh, there is fraud in the original trust. And so, it, they have to take over and it becomes a constructive trust relative to the original trust. And again, I'm giving you language. I'm giving you some content. I'm giving you some, some food for which you are now going to have to do some research so that when you sit down with the council that's going to help you put together the trust, that you are able to handle that. If in fact, you are interested, in fact, you are looking to create a trust, you can inbox me. I will refer you over to individuals that you can interview or you can speak with regarding trusts. Trusts vary in pricing and it can, there are hefty price tags. So I have, because you are in the Wealth Warrior family, guess what? You get the benefit of the resources of the Wealth Warrior community. And when you do that, what it does is it allows you to get the family rate. How about that? Let me give you a couple of other trusts. There is something called the Express Trust. And the Express Trust is created by the grantor under the trust agreement. Now, typically when you hear the word grantor or grantee, that usually refers to real estate. How about an implied trust? And an implied trust occurs, it arises from a, some specific facts that may or may not have been known with the in the original trust. Sometimes these trusts are augmented, augmenting existing trusts. So the implied trust, it's some facts that were not known in the original trust and it arises. And so thus arising trust becomes the name of that trust. Here is a heavy duty one. I want you, in fact, on my list, you'll notice I have a star right there. When you hear the word irrevocable trust, you want to, oh my goodness, you want to understand that an irrevocable, an irrevocable trust cannot be altered. Cannot be altered. Are you hearing me? I say that because 
There are times when things change. If you decide that you need to have an irrevocable trust, you better have thought everything through because you are not breaking it. Okay, so when you hear irrevocable, it means it's one and done. One and done. Are, are we clear about that? Need I say anything more? Absolutely not. We've talked about the living trust. A living trust is something that occurs while we are alive and competent. So you can be alive on life support and not have a clue as to what's going on. You can be on, you can be on, uh, you can be alive and have had a nervous breakdown. So the, the acid test is, li is, is life and competency. So again, we've talked about a living trust. So thus far, we've talked about an asset protection trust. These are all trusts. So asset protection, protecting your assets from future, future claims against the trust. Okay. So the trust could have dispersed out future claims. Can you have more than one trust? Yes, you can. If that's important to know, you might have trust for the property, for the real estate. You might have trust for the furniture. You might have trust for this. Now, I wouldn't say go crazy about it, but there are trusts for specific purpose and reason. Okay? So I just want to make sure we're clear about that. Charitable trust in which the beneficiaries, the beneficiaries are of the charity. So you might have a charitable trust uh, with an organization because you have passion for that organization. You want to, uh, you want to uh, bring assets in. You want to recruit individuals into the trust that will, that will uh, uh, donate to the trust. So there could be something pretty pivotal about that. Okay, something very powerful about that. I mean, you could literally set, set up an ass, a, a charitable trust on behalf of the Manchester families if you were so inclined. So charitable trust. We talked about constructive trust. That's when a something has occurred. Um, it's a matter of law and legal. It has occurred. There's been some level of fraud. And so a constructive trust may have to be established over the original and existing trust. Um, express trust. That usually deals uh, with, uh, it's created by a grantor that's usually something relative to real estate, and it, it's um, created by the grantor under the trust agreement, so an express trust. An implied trust, remember we talked about arising from particular facts. We didn't have facts by them, we have them now. And as a result of having them now, we are putting together an implied trust. An irrevocable trust. It makes me nervous sometimes. It's a trust that cannot be altered. It's a trust in which you have got to be in phenomenally clear, phenomenally clear with what's happening. With You know there's no question in your mind. It's one and done. We talked about a living trust. We actually started off talking about the benefits of a living trust. We've got a couple more. We're going to take a station break so that I can share with you a couple more things that you would want to know about. On Thursdays, on Thursday evenings, like next Thursday, or we could say this upcoming Thursday, I conduct, I have a broadcast, open office Q&A with Brett Harding. You get to ask questions about anything that is business, anything that is entrepreneurial related. You get to ask those questions. Anything about your business, you get to ask those questions. Periodically, I will have a guest with me, and the both of us will be asking questions. And in fact, I am pleased to share with you two of the upcoming guests that will be joining me at the open office office. <laughs> we will have Alberta Bogan, who is an insurance professional. She will be joining me and will be answering your questions. Business, it is all about the business. And I am pleased to say that I will also have Ronald coming on. Not only, he not only runs a, a broadcast, which I have been on, a radio broadcast I've been on. He is a marketing guru, and he's going to join me at, on a Thursday at Open Office. 
it starts at 7 a, 7 p.m., runs from 7 to 7.30. And then from 7.30 to 8.30, you are able, you have the ability to book an appointment and come in to the office. And I will answer your questions. You can bring material. I will give you suggestions. I will give you recommendations with the caveat. The disclaimer is that Brent is not an attorney. She's not an accountant. She's not a CPA. She's not a tax preparer. She is none of those. She is an entrepreneur that has plenty of years experience. She's had great successes and she's had some challenges. So she's going to speak with you from the perspective of real time, real life. Woo! Whew. Got that all done. Got that said. Now, let me share with you two other trusts that you would want to be considering. Are you ready? These are the last two. Put that phone up, hit the share button. How many views are we gonna have today? I'm looking for us to have at least 100. At least 100 people have seen this and we're going to grow it because next week I want 200. And this is a, this is a holiday weekend. So getting 100, getting y'all up has is, is been, I gotta give it to you, I gotta give you, cause you did it, you showed up. And that is phenomenal and I thank you. Okay, another trust we have is called a resulting trust. And it's created when the legal title of the property <clears throat> is transferred to the beneficial, to the beneficiary, to the beneficial interest. However, it's enjoyed by another person who does not have legal title to that. So again, it's created when the legal title to the property is transferred, but the beneficial interest is to be enjoyed by someone other than the person who got title. So an example of this could be you have a relative. It is, it's gone from mom to you. And let's say it's a house and you have a relative that is, you have somebody from, you have a, a, a Manchester UK family that needs some help. You may decide to let them reside in that. You uh, created a legal title. Uh, I mean, excuse me, you, um, you allow them to reside and draw up a benefit of being in that house. And typically you do this by legal course so that this is not necessarily a rental situation. There may be a title scenario or there may be some activity that gives them the right, although you retain title. Now that can get murky, can get a little complicated. That's why you have counsel to help you with these. Notice how many, there are many more than what we're discussing this morning. I pulled out real time, a lifetime trust that I thought would be most poignant for you to hear about, but there are more. How about this one? The needs trust. Special needs trust typically occurs uh, when a person is receiving government funds a special needs trust. So with that being said, there are a plethora. And again, my what I saw or what I wanted to share with you are some of the most powerful that you would want to understand and know about. A trust allows you to quantify your properties out to the beneficiary without the burden of a will without the burden of probate, without the burden of having a conservator assigned by the court because business did not get handled. Again, our broadcast today has been dedicated to the families of the, Man of the Manchester UK victims and their families. It is to move us to understand that we need to handle our business now. I am so enthusiastic that Boston, here we are in Boston. Boston is known over in Manchester to the Manchester Evening News. Why? Because Compassion Pizza being sent over to help the reporters continue to bring us news. Whew. Well, I'll tell you what. 
I hope that you got some nuggets out of today. If you got nuggets out of the day, hit me with some thumbs up, show me some love. Because we had a lot. I, I tell you, there are, there's more paper across my desk today than you can imagine to make sure that I have hit everything that I need to hit. So with that being said, before we wrap up, let me hit my mentions. Again, next week, we're going to be talking about insurance. We're going to be, we got the suspenders, we're going to be putting the belt on it. So we're going to be talking about insurance. We have had a number of announcements. If you are in Boston on June 2nd, make sure you join myself and a number of us at Kit Pang's Boston Speaks over at Landsmark Building on the Fenway. Tickets! Tickets, 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 VIP tickets. I cannot emphasize enough to you about getting your tickets for E3 Power Up. E3 Power Up, a woman's award-winning conference that will be in Boston on September 30th. Once the VIP tickets are sold, we do not have a waiting list. It's one and done. After that, it's general admission. If you want to be a part of the entire day, the general admission day, you want to be a part of what's going to be happening at the VIP sessions, then you need to get your tickets now. Not yesterday, now. You have two locations. You go up to Eventbrite or you can go up to our site. You can see the link and it'll send you over to Eventbrite. With that being said, it has been my pleasure to be your host of the Wealth Warrior broadcast. We come to you live every Saturday morning and we'll be here again next week. And until then, go out today and be absolutely unequivocally extraordinary.